So, uh, I hate to begin a lecture like that, but uh, it is currently <laughs> 1.53 a.m. I actually had no idea it was that late. Um, but yes, it is 1.53 a.m., and I am recording a lecture on uh, the Schrodinger equation and quantum probability. <laughs> Welcome to the life and times of a physics professor during COVID. So, um, uh, for what it's worth, I, I have full confidence that I'll be able to talk intellig as intelligently as I do at 1 a.m. as I do at 1 p.m. Um, if not, I would be a pretty bad MIT grad. But um, I just, I, I, I wanted to make sure that I got through this lecture here. And so um, if I do look a little tired, though, you understand why. Uh, but so let's go ahead and start talking about probability of a discrete variable. And by that, I mean a little bit more precisely, probability of functions based on a discrete variable. And as a perfect example here, I've just written out a chart, of a sample data chart of the ages of a random collection of kids on a school bus. Now, um, kind of, you know, interestingly, I'd mentioned that I'm, I'm more or less going straight from Griffith's treatment of this, but in kind of preparing how to describe this, I, I sat down and just kind of thought about what I wanted to do, and turns out the exact, you know, example I'm using, I opened Griffith's book after I kind of, you know, wrote this out, he uses literally the same exact example, except like different numbers. Uh, and not, not like kids on a school bus, but kids in a classroom or something. Um, and I think that just kind of shows like how deeply ingrained the way that you learn things is, you know, is really in your head. Uh, because like I said, this is the text that I learned from. So, uh, there's my marker. So anyway, though, the point is that this is a great example to discuss what the basic uh, uh, terminology and the basic probability um, variables that we'll be using once we transition to um, continuous functions. And you'll see why we need to do that once we describe the Schrodinger equation. So um, everything I'm gonna describe here, or at least for the first half of this, is stuff that you probably learned about in, you know, I would literally guess like maybe third grade, fourth grade math. Like you probably heard the terms, you know, mean, median, mode, you know, maybe that was sixth grade, but either way. Uh, so we're, we're just going to re-describe that using a little bit funkier notation and maybe a little, a little bit more precise formulas. But what, it, what I really want to emphasize here, though, is that none of this is new to you. It's just the way that we describe it and the way that we calculate it might look a little bit different. So let's go ahead and start off with that. And first of all, if you notice here, um, there's, you can very easily calculate the number of students in the class, or, or sorry, in the school bus. Uh, before we do that, though... Uh, let's change some of our headers here because I want to be consistent with uh, a little bit more general mathematics and not talk about ages and numbers. So the first column, like I said, this is basically our independent variable. This is the range of, of values that, that um, well, it's our sampling variable, if you will. You have a whole bunch of kids. If you sample one of them at random, you grab them and pull them off the bus and you demand, what age are you? They're going to tell you one of these numbers unless they're so scared they just start crying. Um, but the point is, though, this is our variable, and we're just going to call this J. And very clearly, J takes on discrete values. You cannot, I mean, yeah, you can have a kid who is eight and a half years old, eight and a quarter years old, but we're, we're not allowing for that. They've either had their eighth birthday, they've had their ninth birthday, or they have not. So they can't be anything in between. So that's our variable there, our sampler, the thing that we're sampling. And right here, instead of thinking about the number, we're going to think about this a little bit more generally as a function of that variable, the number of students of that age. So again, we're, we're, getting, we're abstracting just a tad here, but if, if it helps you, just replace these header columns with the words that I had, or the words or the thingies that I had before. Um, again, though, a function of a discrete variable. And so first of all, like I said, if you want to calculate the total number of students on the bus, you literally just add up how many are eight, how many are nine, and so on. So putting that a little bit more clearly, the total, which we will write as n, the way that we calculate that is simply just summing over all values of j that the, the value of the function of that index variable. So again, that's just two plus four plus eight plus three plus three. And from here on out, I will never tell you what the limits of the index are because I'm gonna assume you're smart enough to be able to fill those limits in for yourself. 
Now, um, that's in this case here, you could pretty clearly set J from 8 to 12, but it's fully understood what that should be. As we go to slightly more esoteric, esoteric things, the limits will become a little bit more unclear, and it will just be helpful. And by the way, the limits will turn into these thingies, which I think you know what I mean by that. Um, but I'm, I'm intentionally going to avoid setting the, the summation limits there. So we have our way of calculating n as a function, a sum of a function. Now, if we talk about the mode, which again, like I said, you all know what this is. The mode is the most likely outcome if you were to choose one random kid and ask him what he is. He or she is. So the way you look at that is just look on the right-hand column here and you see which number is the highest. So the mode is really the most common. The most common J, if you will. Or the most common of your list of independent options. And the, I'm going to describe this slightly differently in a moment, so kind of leave a line there, but there, it, there's really nothing more to that there. The median, again, the way it was probably described to you is if you take all of the ages here, so you, you take all the kids, you line them up from youngest to oldest, and then you see there's, well, in this case, you can tell, by the way, the answer is 20. Um, I don't need to, you know, like, baby you there. But you have 20 students, you line them up from age 8 to age 12, you look at the student in the middle. Or maybe if there's two in the middle, you, you average them out. Um, we don't need to get too picky about that here. But in this case, though, the median is the one that is basically in the middle of the distribution. So the middle of the distribution, I'll, I'll shorten that. So again, I, I think you can recognize this is very clearly just a distribution of ages or a distribution of samples. And we're going to redefine that here in a moment as well. But at this point here, these are two of the three M's, and, and you clearly know what the third M is. Uh, before I describe exactly what that third M is, though, I, I want to define a, the, the, I want to formally define what the probability function is. So I'm going to move over here, and let's formally describe the probability as, uh, and, and just in words, as you probably know, if you were to choose any one of these five options, the probability that, um, sorry, let me rephrase that. If you were to choose a random kid from the bus and ask them how old they are, the probability tells us how likely each one of these options is to be their answer on a scale of zero to one. Um, it's the same thing as the, the percentage, uh, the, the, the percent chance, except we scale it instead of zero to 100, we scale it zero to one. So the probability can never be greater than one. So specifically, the way that we define the probability is you simply just look at how many are at that given variable and you divide it by the total number. So let's go ahead and write that here. The probability is, uh, and, and in words, likelihood. So it's likelihood of an outcome and the way I'll write it shorthand, on a scale of zero to one, with the endpoints included. And more precisely, the probability of getting an answer that is J is just the number of students of that age J divided by the total number. So this isn't something new, and I guarantee you could have if I gave you a few moments to think about exactly how to formalize that definition, I guarantee you could have come up with that exact same uh, uh, equation there. So let's go ahead and just write out the probabilities of each of those ages here and add it to our chart. And again, just to be entirely clear, this probability is a function of a discrete variable, just like the number is. So at this point here, let's go back and let's look at the mode and the median. And we can rephrase the mode now in terms of our probability function. And instead of thinking about the one with the highest number, let's just consider it the one with the highest probability. And then the median is the value that 
there is an equal probability to get higher as getting lower. Again, we're, we're talking sampling. If you were to sample an average person, the, there's an equal likelihood of getting an answer of greater than eight as there is less than eight. Uh, and I meant to say probability. Equal probability. So as it turns out, neither of these two variables, or not really variables, neither of these two things are, are really incredibly important in quantum physics. The one that is, though, is the one that we typically associate with the, me, uh, the median or, or the average, as, as we tend to call it. So I will call that the mean, though. And from here on out, I won't call it the mean anymore. I'm now going to refer to it as the expectation value. And that's the quantum, uh, uh, the, the, the quantum term for the average or the mean. And the way that we write this now is, I'll, I'll define it here in a moment, but the way that we, that we notate the mean is by this. So what you've probably seen before is something that might look like this J with a bar over it. And that, that's how it, it's described in most math, mathematicians class, math, whatever, math classes. But we're going to call it this from here on out. Um, by the way, in, in certain branches of mathematics, they actually do agree with this notation, specifically in, in group theory or, or, well, I don't want to go any further, but uh, many times you actually will see this type of notation um, because it turns out that there was a branch of mathematics that was basically created parallel to and, and directly related to quantum physics. Uh, David Hilbert is one of the founders of that back in the early 1900s. Um, and and I, will, I, I will mention Hilbert's name a number of other times here, even today. So anyway, though, this is the, the notation we're going to use for the mean or the average, and we're going to call it the expectation value. And let's, I, I'm, I need a little more space here, but then we'll actually formally define this, and we'll see a kind of a strange result of it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and redrawn, actually, I've gone ahead and redrawn our chart here, um, and so I just need a little more space. But just if it's helpful, I, I would actually just suggest, like, you know, writing in your notes or whatever as you watch this, um, because I will actually erase this here momentarily. So the expectation value is, again, exactly what we have known as the average or the mean before. And let's just write out it entirely in the foolproof way of calculating this. And again, I'm going to use a proper notation here. The average result of J, the average age, to be clear, is given by, now as, as you probably know, you just take the sum of all of these here to, um, sorry, I got that wrong. You add up all of the students' ages. So you ask them each one in a row to tell, them, tell, us, to tell us their age. You add up the net total of all of the ages, divided by the number of students. So eight plus eight plus nine plus nine plus nine plus nine plus 10, eight times, plus 11 plus 11 plus 11, plus 12 plus 12 plus 12, whatever. You, you guys get the point. So I'll write this out a little bit more succinctly here as eight times two plus nine times four plus, and you get the point, uh, I don't apparently. So this is this net total of all of the students' ages, so the net total of all of our samples divided by the total number n. And now formalizing this or abstracting it very slightly here, let's rewrite that in terms of our variable and our function n, uh, n of j. So this is really the same thing as on the top, we're just going to sum this over j again. And that first thing is literally our variable j. And the second thing in each term here is going to be n of j divided by N. So in this case here, we can see that pretty clearly this is a well-defined function. We have some sum over an index variable, and by the way, this is a constant there. So it's fine to keep that outside of that uh, outside of the summation, but as you know, if you're adding 
you know, if you're adding a string of things and then dividing that entirety by some number, you can divide each term by that same number as well. So I'm gonna rewrite that slightly as the sum, overall j again, of j, and I'm doing this suggestively, j times n of j over big N. And I erase something I didn't mean to erase um, because I hope you see what that last thing is now. This last thing here we've already defined and then promptly erased, but this is exactly what the probability is. This is simply P of J. So I told you I was going to erase that and now I have. So let's go ahead and rewrite this in the most general fashion that we can. The, the expectation value or the average value of our age of the students or of our distribution variable is simply the sum over all possible results of that times that. Hey Lenny, how are you doing? Babe? And this is a really important result here because this is probably the first thing you may not, may not have seen in, in, well, I guarantee if you've taken a college class in, in probability, you have seen this type of formula. Um, and if you've taken an engineering class, you have also seen this type of formula. If you were to think about this in terms of a position times a mass at that position, now, and you don't necessarily need to just pull this out, but um, this would be an example of a calculation of, for example, a center of mass. Position times the mass of that position. If you square that, a position squared times the mass of that position, that's what we call the moment of inertia. This is a general type of function that we call a moment. And I will be entirely honest, I've had discussions with my colleagues trying to get them to tell me uh, what a moment really is, and I have yet to comprehend it. All I know is that a moment is some function where there is some variable times basically the distribution of that variable. And it could be j, it could be j squared, it could be j cubed, but generally speaking, whenever you have a function like this, the average of whatever that function is, is simply found by taking the sum of whatever that function is times its probability. I'm going to refer you to any other source other than me on what a moment is to get a better feel of that. But I do want to generalize this here. And I'm going to say that the expectation value of any function, you know, I think I've just figured it out. <laughs> a moment is an expectation value. That, that's precisely what it is. Cool. Okay, cool. A moment is an expectation value function. This is an expectation value of just that variable. What is the expected age? Um, I'm going to go on to that real quick, but I just want to write in our exact table, and, and I'm going to continue my train of thought in a moment. But for our exact data set, for our set, the expectation value is... 10, and I, if you've done the calculation, it's not exactly 10, turns out. It is 10.05. Now, why is that true? I'll, I'll give you a big hint. You could also say this as 10 and a 20th. So in this case here, as we see, the median, the age right in the middle of the class is 10. The mode is also 10. Those don't necessarily have to match. In our case, they did. But the, the, the person smack dab with an age that's in the middle of the class has an age of 10. The average age of the class, or the expected value of that class, is 10.05. And this brings up a rather strange point. How can you have the most, the, the, the expected value of the age function to not actually be anyone's age? Like, clearly no one in the class would say they have an age of 10.05. But in this case here, that is exactly the average age of the class. Uh, by the way, what, um, and, and this, this is going to be really important once we get to quantum measurements. We're going to find the case where you're going to find the expected value of a quantum measurement may not be an actual result that you could ever actually measure. 
You know, it's kind of like saying you have a choice between red, green, and blue. The expected value of that is going to be whatever, brown, or something like that. None of the above, but it's the average of all of them. And, and that's not such a bad example there. Uh, now, in this case here, this, the actual, the, the, the expectation value of our age distribution is not, in fact, anyone's age, but it's equally well-defined. And this is something that is going to be a little bit kind of tricky to play with your mind, because in the end, this is a really important um, uh, quantum thing once we get to that discussion, but understand that the expected value might not actually be the any possible value, any outcome. Okay, so let's go back to our discussion of what a moment is. And, and as I <laughs> real-time recognized, a moment is simply just a likelihood of whatever that is. It's how like the, the, the most likely value of J. We can generalize that. If you have any function, a function based on that variable, you can find the average value or the, or the average outcome of that function simply just by summing up the value of that function times its probability for all the possible values j. And I'm going to write that here. The sum of whatever that function of j is over all the possible values of j times how likely that value of j is to occur. So this is just one example, a very easy example. It's the average age. In a moment here, we're going to change this to j squared. What is the average value of your age squared? And you just change that to j squared. But I need to get some more board space here. 